In the previous lecture, we had discussion on Norton's theorem, and uh, there we saw that the Thevenin's equivalent resistance R T H is equal to the Norton's equivalent resistance R N, and they are equal to the Thevenin's equivalent voltage V T H over the Norton's equivalent current I N, and uh, we call it Thevenin-Norton transformation. Why? Because we use it to transform the Thevenin's equivalent circuit to Norton's equivalent circuit and the Norton's equivalent circuit to Thevenin's equivalent circuit. Now there is one more name for this. We call it source transformation. Now why we are calling it source transformation? Let us try to understand. We know in case of Thevenin's equivalent circuit, there is a voltage source. Present and in case of Norton's equivalent circuit, there is a current source present. Now, with the help of this, when we transform the Thevenin's equivalent circuit to Norton's equivalent circuit, we are transforming voltage source to current source. And when we are transforming the Norton's equivalent circuit to Thevenin's equivalent circuit, we are transforming a current source to voltage source. And this is why we call it source transformation. We are having two cases: voltage source transformed to current source, and current source transformed to voltage source. We will discuss our case number one now. We have a voltage source V connected in series with a resistance R, and when you compare this with Thevenin's equivalent circuit, you will find this is V T H, and this resistance. Is R T H. Now we will transform it to the Norton's equivalent circuit. And we know in case of Norton's equivalent circuit, we have a current source connected in parallel with a resistance. From here we can see that R N is equal to R T H. This is R N, and it will be equal to R T H, which is R. So we have our resistance; it is equal to R. Now, what about the current source? From here, you can see that I N will be equal to V T H over R T H. V T H is V, R T H is R. So this current source will be V over R. So from this, we can deduce that whenever we have a voltage source connected in series with a resistance, we can replace this configuration. With this configuration, in which we have a current source connected in parallel with the same resistance, and the value of current source is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance from the initial configuration. So I hope this transformation is clear to you. Now we will move on to our second transformation. Initially, we have this configuration: one current source in parallel with the resistance. And when you compare this with Norton's equivalent circuit, you will find this current source will have the value equal to I n. So I is I n, and this resistance, which is R, is R n. Now we will transform it to the Thevenin's equivalent. Circuit. We have a voltage source in series with a resistance. Resistance is R T H, and we know R T H is equal to R N. R N is equal to R, so it will have the value equal to R. And the voltage source is V T H, and the V T H is equal to R N multiplied to I N. So it will have the value equal to R N multiplied to I N. This means it will have the value equal to R multiplied to I. So I can write it is I R. So we can say that whenever we have this configuration in which there is a current source in parallel with a resistance, we can convert it to this configuration in which there is a voltage source in series with the same resistance, and the voltage source will have the value equal to this current multiplied to this resistance from the initial configuration. So this is all for our transformation number two, and with these two transformations, you can have a lot of help while solving questions. And uh, now I will explain what has not to be done while using the source transformation. 
and for this purpose I have taken this network in which we have two sources and three resistors. The current through this branch will be equal to 4 amperes and the current through this branch will be equal to 5 amperes. So we can see that this 4 amperes of current from this source is not entering to this branch and it is going through this branch and this 5 amperes of current from this source is also not entering to this branch and it is going through this branch. Now let us talk about the power dissipation through the resistors. If we talk about this resistor then the power dissipation through it will be equal to 0 watt. Through this resistor the power dissipation will not be equal to 0 watt and through this resistor the power dissipation will not be equal to 0 watt. Now when you observe this section of the network and this section of the network you will find we have this particular configuration and therefore we can have the source transformation like this. We have a voltage source having the value 4 multiplied to 5 that is 20 volts connected in series with 5 ohm resistor and here we have voltage source with value 5 multiplied to 4 that is 20 volts connected in series with 4 ohm resistor and when you apply KVL in this loop you will find current is equal to 0 and again we will talk about the power dissipation power dissipation through this resistor will be equal to 0 watt power dissipation through this resistor will be equal to 0 watt this time and power dissipation through this resistor will be equal to 0 watt this time. Now what we can observe is that in case of 10 ohm resistor we are having the same power dissipation but in case of 5 ohm resistor and 4 ohm resistor we are not having the same power dissipation. And uh, the reason is 5 ohm resistor and 4 ohm resistor are involved in transformation. On the other hand, the 10 ohm resistor is not involved in the transformation. So the conclusion is do not perform the calculations for the resistances which are involved in the transformation. Here 5 ohm resistor and 4 ohm resistor are involved in the transformation and therefore it is not advised to perform the calculations for them. So I hope you will take care of this particular point. And uh, this is all for this lecture. I will end it here. See you in the next one.